What's going on, y'all? Today we got Can Kyrie Irving Save the Mavericks? Kyrie, what's up with you, my boy? You were supposed to go with Braun and him. You know? You know? You were supposed to go with Braun and him, man. We got some funny videos after this to watch, too, y'all. Kyrie Stay Irving soon. has just been Not traded this, to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, a first-round pick, and a handful of seconds. And as someone who has been hypercritical of the Dallas Mavericks, I could really not be more happy with this move. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you why. Real quick, if you end up enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe for three videos a week. Also drop a like, only takes one second, it makes a massive difference. So this news literally just dropped and I immediately ran in here to record this video, but I have a lot of thoughts immediately at the prospect of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving playing together on the same team. Real quick, because that's the obvious thing that we want to tackle, I'm going to go ahead and throw out there my thoughts on the Brooklyn Nets real quick. I do think relative to what was being rumored to be out there that the Nets managed to get back a pretty good return. Dorian Finney-Smith is a really good rotation player. Spencer Dinwiddie has played there before and he kind of does a, I don't know, C plus, B minus version of what Kyrie can do. That's a scoring guard who can be a scoring guard. Not as good as Kyrie, but it fills that type of role and they're getting back a good role player in Dorian and a first round pick, you know, cool. Ultimately, I would definitely say if they were trying to get some players that can contribute right now, they did that while also managing to get some draft capital. So good on them. That's actually a much better return for Kyrie Irving than I originally anticipated. But now let's talk about Dallas because that's what everyone's going to want to talk about. First things first, let's just address, I think that the notion that I'm sure people are going to bring up immediately is the how do you deal with the fact that both of these guys like to dribble the ball a lot and I will argue that Kevin Durant likes to dribble the ball a lot especially lately and it's worked out just fine now obviously Luka Doncic is someone who almost has the ball in his hand damn near 24 7 and that's not going to fly with Kyrie Irving on the team so there's definitely going to be some adjustment period and Luka is going to have to do more off-ball stuff and ironically even though he's not done it in the NBA historically from where he did it you know overseas originally Luka does have have some off-ball chops. It's not something that he is entirely incompetent in. So I'm not too worried about that. And Kyrie Irving, even though he's someone who is known for his handles, is also a lethal knockdown shooter, both off of the dribble and in the catch and shoot. And he's historically been a pretty damn good off-ball player. So I'm really not worried about this from a fit perspective. The only thing that might be there is a little bit of redundancy, just in the fact that both of these players like to attack in similar areas and in similar ways. But at the end of the day, these are two players who have off of the chart shot creating ability, at least in Kyrie's case, really, really good three point shooting ability. Luca's catch and shoot numbers are terrible. He's weirdly way better at contested step backs and things like that, but you know, he can shoot and he's pretty good at cutting all that. I, I do think that this fit is not going to be too problematic. Another thing that's huge about this is Christian Wood has not gone anywhere, which was what I really thought was going to happen when this trade, if this trade were to go down, because I did a video Video speculating on trades most recent to this one talking about you know the Lakers and Clippers and of course the Mavericks were also mentioned in that video the Suns and I was really quite certain that Christian Wood was going to be a part of this move because there's been a lot of rumors suggesting the idea that Christian's probably not going to be a Maverick by the end of this deadline now maybe that's possibly true maybe things will swing that way and who knows but right now it looks like he's here to stay and that trio offensively is about as good as you're going to to get because Christian Wood as your third best scorer is still somebody who can get you 20 a night on any given night and now you have three of those guys who are capable of getting 20 plus and you manage to still keep a couple of decent enough rotation players though I will say that I do worry if they do thin out a little bit at the forward position I guess Maxi Kleba is going to have to step into that spot or if there's someone else that I'm not thinking of but I do believe that the Mavericks definitely uh got about as much bang for their buck as they could. I mean, ultimately, Kyrie replaces what Dinwiddie did and does it way better, and all you gave up was a 3 and D guy and a pick that you probably weren't even going to use. So, home run move on the trade front. I really think the fit's going to work. So, now, let's talk about how far this Dallas 
Mavericks team could potentially go now that they have Kyrie Irving on the roster because I really think this throws a massive wrench in really the entire Western Conference because right now things are about as open as they could be and because of that a team making a home run move like this could actually swing things rather dramatically and I think that's very well possible here. Now that the Mavericks have Kyrie, I think that instantly makes them significantly scarier than they were before to face. Because what has happened historically is that Luka Doncic, the teams that defend him in the playoffs, just kind of queue up on him. And while he is still doing ridiculous stuff, ultimately the defense queues up on him enough that especially by the fourth quarter when he's tired enough and it's very clear that no one else is really going to step up and do all that much, comes down to if Luka Luka is really that good at carrying and even he's so good that he was able to carry them all the way to the Western Conference Finals slash the Suns were so incompetent they allowed that to happen but any way it goes right now it looked as though or before this it looked as though if the Mavericks go far it's because Luka carried simple as that there's no other way it happens that's not the case anymore. Kyrie being here, he's capable of being the best player in a winning playoff series. So now you have someone <laughs> on that caliber paired with Luka. He's easily the best teammate that he's ever had. And now the Mavericks can win and Luka can just kind of chill. And that is something that is really pivotal because that's been what I've been dying for this team to bring for Luka from the very beginning. From the onset, they took this heliocentric, he's the man, he does everything approach and it was not good for his career especially in the long run and now we finally are going to be able to see what Luca looks like next to an all-star player an all-star guard hasn't had that yet and I think it's awesome and I want to say as someone who has been super duper critical of the Dallas Mavericks that they finally did something that I'm quite happy with I was also happy with the Christian Wood trade but this is really a low risk high reward move little given up, especially a player that they were looking to move already in Dorian Finney-Smith. Just an absolute home run. Now, in terms of what this means for their championship hopes, I do genuinely think this instantly puts them solidly in the contender category. Now, I think that we're already on that cusp just because Luka is amazing, but ultimately I would have picked another team to win because of the Luka solo squad issue. But given that they have Kyrie Irving now, there's not really any reason to to discount the Mavericks. There's really not any reason to feel like some team will eventually overcome them because that principle will no longer apply. Wow, I'm really happy with this move. Obviously, I'm just going entirely off of the dome. I'm sorry for that text sound, but this was, this is awesome. Um, Luka Doncic should be thrilled. And even if this doesn't go anywhere, and I, I said this before, I think in the most recent Kyrie video, that trading for someone at the deadline generally doesn't actually yield championship results. The really only time that you can point to it happening is Mark Gasol on the Toronto Raptors when they traded for him at the deadline in 2019 from the Grizzlies. Generally, not something that happens, even if it's a really good player, because there's adjustment period. That player doesn't go through a training camp with that team. There's a lot of moving parts that make it less simple than just looking at the talent on paper. So if I were a betting man, I would definitely still say that the Mavericks are definitely not my favorite just because of that adjustment period but if Kyrie ends up taking a liking to Dallas and he thinks that the fit there is good uh, and they're willing to pay him because that's a thing that's questionable about pretty much every team in the league is whether or not they're willing to pay Kyrie if the stars align and he re-signs the Mavericks might be my favorite next year especially if they manage to put some good role players around those two uh, really really just a great move from the Mavericks I know I keep saying that and all things considered a pretty good return for the Brooklyn Nets. So I guess I can talk about the Lakers at the very end here. Uh, yeah. So my Lakers are fast. And I just posted a video about Austin Reeves and their unwillingness to trade him. If it comes out to be true that they could have gone Kyrie and then they didn't because they didn't put Austin Reeves in the move, pretty pathetic. And it's really sad. And it's just indicative of how awful Rob Palenka and the Lakers front office. And that's the end of this one, yeah. Come on, man. Let me know how y'all feel. Y'all think this is going to work with Luka and um, and Kyrie, man. Damn. Yo, Reed, who's supposed to be with the, with the Lakers, man? We're, we're browning them. Like the old times, man. Come on, man. <laughs>
But yeah, man, if y'all enjoyed this reaction, make sure you click on the last reaction on your screen right now. Or it's probably going to be over here. I don't know why I'm pointing straight. It's over here. But turn on post notification. Probably because you got to click on the screen. That's why I'll be like, click on the screen. You know what I'm saying? Click on that lap. Click on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it's right here. So click on it. You know? Click on the last reaction. And I'm out of here, man.